C4 Corvette Suspension Conversion Part 4. C notch the frame, finish out the cross member install, assemble suspension. Step number one, we're going to C notch this frame. Okay, now that I've determined the correct placement for the C notch, we are going to make short work of it with this plasma cutter. And the whole reason we're C notching this frame is the power steering unit that's going to go in this area has a tie rod that connects to the spindle and it's going to pass right through this area and we need clearance. So we're going to use this PVC pipe to ensure that we have the correct clearance and everything is straight. Okay, now we're going to get this tacked into place. Now this little coupon here, this was provided in the kit. So we'll get a couple tacks on it. Then we're going to check the fitment. Everything looks good. We have a nice gap. Now we want that big of a gap. And I'll tell you why here in a second. We're going to be welding this with a MIG welder. And we're going to stack some beads on there. Now if we just flush fit this piece to the frame, well we're going to grind right through when we shape and contour this. We want a really nice finish out on the frame. So stacking the beads is going to give us a little bit of extra weld so that we can grind it down and make it pretty. Now this kit came with the boxing plate and that's already installed but it fell short so I had to fashion this little extension here and it's going to tie the cross member in to the frame. Now we want to ensure that that piece is straight otherwise it's going to look it's going to look funny if we weld it in crooked or canted don't want that want everything really nice and straight really nice finish and we've got that tacked in and we'll double check that for straightness Okay, now we're going to finish out the outside of the frame. And first we're going to cover up all of the finished out machined areas. We don't want to get any welding spatter or sparks gouging into the metal. Want a really nice finish. Don't want to put damage into anything. So, okay, so we're using a three inch grinding disc to shape and contour this area and you can see why we put the extra weld on there now this isn't a one-shot deal that we're going to finish it out with the grinding wheel we're switching over to a 36 disc grit grit disc and we want to ensure that it is flat the sander is flat we don't want to grind divots or push valleys into this it's going to look really bad once it's uh powder coated and now I've switched over to a flat disc just shaping and contouring a little bit more everything's coming along really nicely looking good and now we've got a flap wheel I think that's probably about, I don't know, 60 grit. And we're just taking out any lines, marks, grinding marks. Just making everything really nice. Because if we had flush fit this and welded, yeah, we would already have burned through the weld or at least made it weaker in that area. Okay, so now I've got an 8-inch orbital sander with uh, 80 grit. And we're going to hit it with this, and then we're going to leave this. Now, before the frame is powder coated, once all the welding is done, we'll come back with 120 and then 220. And there's a shot of what we've done so far. And you can see the inside still has to be dressed down. You can see the extra weld in there. 
Okay, now if you have watched part number three of this series, this kit, it's not my favorite. We had to do a extra cutting out of the frame just to rock this cradle in here and yeah i wasn't real happy with that but we're you know we're just going to deal with that it's not a big deal what i'm doing now is i'm fashioning a template so that we can make a cover plate and it's going to add extra strength to this whole area too uh make a cover plate out of a uh, quarter inch steel and checking the fit on that now we don't want to try to bridge this gap with just welding so i fashioned this little uh piece here we're going to tap that just below flush and then weld that in dress down the weld and now we can fit our plate over the top of that weld that in and uh add strength and tie everything together and since this is on top, well, we're going to TIG weld all of the areas that need to be welded on top. We want to do a really nice visual job for our customer. We'll try to uh, stack some dimes in here if possible. Now, I've already started on the passenger side. And I moved to the driver's side because we're letting the passenger side cool. And once I get this run in, we'll switch back over. Everything's going nicely. The key to nice looking welds, it's all in the fit up. Like 80% of it. If you have a bad fit up, you're not going to, it's not conducive to uh, nice looking wells. And I think I'm using an uh, eighth inch rod here. Everything's going in really nicely. Okay, now in part three, we had to cut all of that out just to get this cross member in here. Now we've put the piece back that we cut out, ground it all down, made it all look nice, but we're going to go ahead and install fish plates over that area. Now I only had to cut out one side, but we're going to go ahead and put the plates on both sides to make everything look equal and even. And we're going to get that welded into place. And we had to do quite a bit of extra work with this kit. Now there was huge gap under the frame beneath the frame and the cross member so we're just going to address that right now and this plate will add strength so you know it's not a we'll, we'll look for the win in this and we'll look for the positive now we had to make some little triangular plates also just to uh totally box all of this in but now that all that's done all of the welding's done We've added strength, extra strength to the work. So the cross members, for the most part, installed. Now we can move on to mocking up the suspension. Okay, first up. Rack and pinion. Going to try to get that thing carefully in there, not tear the boot or anything.
There it is. Okay, so the Corvette suspension parts, upper and lower control arms, spindle, these are all manufactured from aluminum. So we want to take extra care not to damage those pieces. Now to use this kit for the coilover suspension lower mount, we're going to have to enlarge the holes in the bosses here. And so now we've mocked up the suspension and we're locating the placement of the upper coil mount. And then we'll be disassembling the suspension again. And getting it welded into place. And you can see we have our little leather apron there. Anytime you're welding, you want to definitely make sure, be conscious of the uh, welding splatter, spatter. Yeah, really don't like to uh, damage things. So let's get this assembled. Upper control arm. And I've already have my uh, spindle mated to the lower control arm. Now this is the coil over, getting it put in position. Now we don't have our outer tie rods in yet. They are in route, so we're not going to be mocking those up just yet. And there it is, all um, mocked into place. Everything's gone together really well. Everything looks centered. Everything looks right. Now I'm going to set the front end on here and trim out the inner wheel wells to make clearance for the upper control arms. And there's a shot of that. And now this is the <laughs> this is the most important part of uh pretty much all of it. The wheel being centered in the wheel well. Yeah, if that wasn't right. Hey, hit that subscribe button. Follow us next video. Thanks for watching.